Well, he saw things that no person uh, should ever have to see. Now a Connecticut police officer who responded to the Sandy Hook school shooting says he's about to lose his job because he's suffering from post-traumatic stress. Tom Bean is the only Newtown police officer who's not been able to go back to work since the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary. He says he's been diagnosed with PTSD, and according to a letter that we've obtained written by the police chief, Bean could lose his job because the PTSD has left him permanently disabled. Now, for him, living through that horror every day makes it impossible to put on that uniform again. Nothing could, pre could prepare you for, for, for that. You know, you got, you know, teachers and students running out of the school, and, and then we went into the school and to help secure the, and it, just the worst possible scenes you can think of. And uh, so, you know, it, there, Initially, you know, I didn't feel like there was any uh, reward <laughs> for, for responding, um, you know, because all, all there was was horror, but that, that day killed me inside. Well, on top of everything else, Officer Bean says the city has told him they can't afford to live up to the terms of the long-term disability police contract, which should cover him for the next 12 or so years and pay for the medical help that he needs. It's a really awful predicament, obviously, for Officer Bean and potentially any first responder who could face the same situation. You're going to hear much more from Officer Tom Bean tonight on Aaron Burnett out front. Our Susan Candiotti will have that entire interview there. Drew, I want to bring you back in. Okay, you're the attorney here. So, and I took some notes here. Sure. Let's, from what I understand, if he retires, he would take a huge penalty for drawing on his pension. Right. Right? Okay. If he gets fired or resigns, Tell me if this is right. He wouldn't get any disability benefits beyond the two years that he's been offered. And if he takes a new job, he loses disability and wouldn't be able to touch his pension until retirement age. I mean, can the city really do this to him? The city is going to have to live up to the contract it has in place with him. They cannot turn around in the 11th hour and say, hey, we didn't anticipate something like this ever happening in our little community when we contractually developed a relationship with each of our employees, namely law enforcement, first responders, et cetera. It's just not what we anticipated we can't follow through. As long as there's a provision in there that should financially take care of him, they can't try to distinguish between paralysis, for example, physical paralysis, right. and the diagnosis of PTSD, particularly at a time when we're seeing the military de deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. If the military is finally saying, hey, PTSD is enough, then I think this community should be able to make that same decision. You know, you make a, make a really interesting point because the military wasn't even dealing with PTSD. I mean, remember all the stories that we covered, you know, uncovering how it wasn't addressed, they weren't acknowledging it, you know, men and women weren't getting help. So now you have this small town. I mean, he saw dead children. I, I can't even imagine, right? They had never seen anything like this. So this is unprecedented. So how can the city say to this guy, Sorry. I mean, it sounds like they're trying to say they don't have the money to do that. Well, you know, they're not going to be able to. And, and now we're in this period, as we talked about, regarding our, our military. And, and what a day for us to be talking about this. Oh, yeah. And when you, see, when you see studies that came post-World War II, mm -hmm. how was the Hells Angels formed post-World War II, ignoring the plight of veterans, and all of a sudden organizations went out after them, and we saw what happened after Korea and after Vietnam and homelessness and crime and drugs. We're now coming to terms with it and we're embracing it. Our military is doing an amazing job doing it. Well, we're seeing these mass shootings, unfortunately, all the time. And if we're seeing them all the time, then we're going to have officers similarly situated. They're going to say, hey, this was just too much for me. I don't know if I can go back. And you can't back out on a contractual deal. It can not happen and it's not going to happen. Again, we'll see a community outpouring and they'll take care of him. And we'll follow it. Drew, appreciate it. Thanks Absolutely. so much. Well, up next, a political newcomer.